貴様の拳だと、顔どにも聞かんわいお前は、もう死んでいる。何<笑>Hey everyone, welcome back to the third episode of Goblin Slayer. In this episode, we are going to cover the unit script over here, all this, line by line. In the next episode, we will cover the hero script and the goblin script. I've decided to split those episodes in two, because for me as a student, I prefer smaller videos like 5 to 10 minutes, instead of longer videos like 20 to 30 minutes. And also by doing that, I can deliver more videos more frequently to you, okay? With that being said, let's begin. Well, first of all, let's answer one big question. Why make this class in the first place? It's very simple. Since we have two entities, the hero and the goblin, that are very similar to one another, I mean, they are both humanoid beings that move in a similar fashion, get hit, attack in a similar fashion, it's advised to create a, a mother entity to be more organized and it's an initial complexity that plays off later, okay? Trust me on this one. You'll see how in the code. With that being said, let's begin. Okay, first of all, we have this over here. Public enum, state, move, attack, hurt, dead. If you don't know what an enum is, it's just a simple way to encapsulate some states that you would otherwise describe as numbers, like 0, 1. As you can see over here, they map, hurt maps to 2, dead maps to 3. It's just a better way for humans to read, okay? Export, private float acceleration, acceleratorium. We might change it later, I'll show you how. Export private float max speed, okay, knockback, health, okay. So those are properties of, a, of an unit that we can set later, okay. Private animation tree, animation tree, animation node state machine playback, animation state, okay. We're just getting those from the unit in the, in, in the Godot scene, okay, fair enough. Private state state, all right. Remember, that is a good practice to put an underscore behind your private variable so you can remember that you can access them only in your class. Private state state, okay, private vector 2 blend, okay, protected vector 2 input, okay, protected vector 2 velocity, okay. Pay attention to, to this over here, protected. It means that classes that inherit from unit can access this, which means that we might change how we treat input later and velocity, which makes sense because hero, for example, will have a different input that's, uh, than goblin, because hero, we can control its input. Goblin, not. It moves by itself. So it makes sense over here. Private damage, okay. And then we begin the methods. Public override void ready. Animation tree, okay, we're just grabbing the animation tree over here. The same thing with the animation node state machine playback. <laughs> it's uh, very verbose, I admit it. And we start in the state move. You see how it's useful? Because otherwise we'd, we would just put like something like this. And it would be hell to remember what that meant later. Of course, you can say I, I could just put move over here, but that would be horrible. Don't, don't do that. You would, don't, don't, don't waste your comments. Use them very sparingly, okay? Blend is a new vector 2, okay? Input is a new vector 2, okay? Velocity is a new vector 2, okay? We're just initial, initializing our variables. And the, the only one that makes a somewhat of a difference over here is starting the state move. Okay. Then we have public override physics process. Physics process is like processes, but for physics-related movement. And what's a physics-related movement? It's typically when we apply forces, and when you use methods that are like move and slide, for example. As you can see over here, this method should be used in physics process, or in a method called by physics process, as it uses physics steps delta value automatically in calculations, otherwise the simulation will run at incorrect speed. So, I mean, pretty much those Mm, very known methods in Godot are used in physics process. That's why we are using it here instead of process, okay? So what are we doing over here? Well, if state isn't dead, <laughs> okay, then we can update the input. Yeah, it makes sense because, I mean, if it's dead, we might not be able to do that and it's correct, okay. Update velocity, okay, if we are moving. And velocity becomes a new moving slide. Okay, not bad, guess I got it. Then we have process. You see over here, we just update movement and update attack. Those are two methods we created over here. With control click, we can go to them. Update movement. If input is not vector zero, okay. It's nice to have this check over here. Otherwise, we'll be doing that in every frame. Remember that. If input.x is not zero, blend.x, okay. We are just grabbing the values for x and y for the blend, okay. And we are updating the animation tree. Oh, okay, it's nice. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a later video, but it's just updating the, the animation that we should show over here, okay? Animation straight travel to walk, if you're moving. Yeah, it makes sense. Else, just make it idle, okay? And remember, update movement and update attack. Both of those 
just relate to animations. They, they don't really relate to movement. So we don't have to do that in physics process. And it's a nice way to differentiate what we are doing from a physical standpoint, like moving for real, and in an animation standpoint. It's a neat way to do that. With that being said, we have receive heat over here. Okay, let's see what, what that do. Receive heat, vector two, heat position. Okay, if state is hurt or state's dead, return. Okay, it makes sense. Mostly this part over here, because the second one is already pretty obvious because I mean, if it's dead, we shouldn't <laughs> stop, he's already dead. Stop! He's already dead! Stop. But state hurt, it's nice because it, it keeps you from getting hit too fast and it's just unfun. So while you are hurt, you can't get hurt again. That's what it means. Or you're dead. Vector 2, knockback direction, global position minus hit position. All right, it makes sense because you just get the vector uh, to the vector in which direction you should be sent to because it's just your position minus the position from where you've been hit. If you do the vector calculation, just draw your position and the, the position have been reached, you get an arrow pointing to your knockback direction. All right, knockback direction normalized. Okay, just so we can put that between 0 and 1 and then multiply by the knockback okay very nice the knockback is something we set remember over here it's a, va a variable we have exported nice let's just do it again just so we can have our velocity oh i see the blend x is the velocity velocity x blend y is velocity y damage plus equals one all right all right it's nice because if damage is health if it had it if it has gotten to health you probably should die yeah animation tree blend position of death you should go to death in your animation your inputs should then become zero and your state should then become dead very nice otherwise you just get hurt all right it makes perfect sense perfect sense receive hit nice then we have two methods very curious one protected virtual update input and protect virtual update velocity. Well, what does virtual mean? It's very simple. You know when we just do public override, public override? Well, <laughs> virtual is like the counterpart to override. It's when in a mother class, we're just signaling that uh, a children of ours can override this method. That That's all it means. Don't, don't get wrapped up in more complexity than that okay with that being said update input okay i guess we will we'll use that in the hero method eventually in the hero class eventually update velocity well if we're going to override that eventually then this part means the it's always going to run, even if it's a goblin or a hero. So what's going on over here? If input is not zero, all right, if we're moving, velocity becomes move towards, okay, something else. Input times max speed, acceleration times delta. Okay, what, what's going on over here? Just remember, when you forget it, that move towards receives two arguments. The first one, two, and the second one, at which rate? So what it means over here is that we are getting to this speed, that is the input times the max speed we can get, at which rate? acceleration times delta. It's a, a little bit of a recipe that you replicate in a lot of your movements. These move towards your input times max speed, that is a variable you can set, acceleration times delta. Otherwise, you move to zero, which means you deaccelerate. Then we get to update movement. But remember, <laughs> this one we have covered already over here. It's just in process. It was just a way to encapsulate all this logic because otherwise, yes, we could just have this inside here instead of making a method for that. But I mean, it's always nice to, when you have like 10 or so lines of code and they are really tight about the, the idea that they ex execute, it's always a better idea to encapsulate them in a method because otherwise, again, remember, you gotta be gentle with yourself six months from now because you'll come back six months from now. And if you have that, you can remember, oh yeah, everything inside here is just update movement. Nice. So you don't have to waste too much time understanding everything again. Okay? That being said, protected virtual update attack. So remember, virtual means that our children can override it, but everyone, everyone of them will travel to attack and set, set state to attack, which makes sense because every one of them will have animations of attack. So they should at the very least go to that animation, which makes sense. Nice. Public state get current state return underscore state. That is just a simple getter. What is a getter? It's just a way to retrieve a, a private property from a class without making it public. It's just getting a method for that. Just making it official, you know? Just, if you really want to get this property, just make it official, okay? <laughs>
that, that's that's simply it. If we just do a global a global search with Control Shift F for that, we can see that Goblin uses that eventually. Okay, nice. Let's just close that. Finally, we have set move state. If state's not dead, then state goes to move. All right. And finally, we have two virtual methods over here. On body entered, which probably is the answer for a signal, and protect virtual void die. That's that is just the way to die. The unit might have a different way to die than Goblin. Not units. The hero might have a different way to die than Goblin. And that's it. That's the whole unit script over here. In the next class, we are going to go through the whole Goblin script over here. That seems bigger, but oh. Honestly, it's just because it just makes some calculations of movement. It's very simple when you look at it close. And the hero script over here. To wrap it all up, let's, let me just show you how I made the, the goblin fly through the screen. It's very simple. I just changed the knockback that used to be zero and the health to three. I just changed it to one and the knockback to 1000. <laughs> that's very nice. When you have a project like this, you want to tweak the variables just to see what happens. And by the way, talking about projects like this, this project is a project from Alpha over here on Patreon. I have his permission to teach through his tutorials. And as you can see over here, this project was the first one he, he sent to Patreon. But since then, he has sent us that, that is very nice one, that a dungeon similar to prototype, and much, much more, much, much more. This is a fully featured game. And, and to have access to all that, you only need to become a patron of his, okay? That's very nice of him. Otherwise, if you just like those tutorials and you want more of that, more game dev tutorials, more Godot tutorials, and beyond game dev, made a game dev, <laughs> consider subscribing to my channel, give it a big like if you like this video, and see you in the next one. Bye!